Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. not for the summer. You told me to look my most attractive for that. I need clothes. Oh, nonsense. Randolph Summers would love you in a sunsuit. It doesn't seem quite proper to me using your wife to entice another man. My dear Pam, Randolph Summers is a best-selling novelist. I am a publisher who likes to publish best-selling novelists. Now, all I want you to do is to be charming to him and entertain his wife while I try to sign him up. I'll show him my card tricks. Well, I wouldn't call that entertainment. Oh, Pam, you don't really need all this junk, do you? We, we'll only be there two days, and we're the only guests. You use your weapons, I'll use mine. You know, darling, I, I'm rather looking forward to a peaceful weekend in the country. Uh, when has it ever been peaceful with you around? Oh! oh. See what I mean? <laughs> no right to rent the house. Without even discussing it with us. It's disgraceful. But I tell you, I couldn't help it. Don't keep telling me you couldn't help it. Are you sure this is the right place? We had an understanding, an agreement. <clears throat> oh, Jerry, yes, come in, come in. <laughs> We're having a fight. Private or free for all? This is my wife, Pam. Randolph Summers? I so look forward to meeting you. <laughs> oh, here's Pam and Jerry North. How do you and do? These two snakes in the grass are Jim and Phyllis Tucker. Randy, you're just being pig-headed. I'm sorry. Oh, don't mind us. We never miss them if we can. Well, you're in for a good one. You see, the Tuckers live next door. In fact, I'm the landlord. Well, that's a good start for a fight right there. <laughs> oh, it gets better. <laughs> Randy, I think we better call time, at least until I've shown the North to their room. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't stop on account of us. No, Pam. <laughs> oh, it's not that interesting, Mrs. North. It's just that the Tuckers have sublet the house to a man we thoroughly dislike. A mistress of understatement. <laughs> Shall we go up? Hmm? Anybody home? If it's who I think it is, the answer is no. Well, well, well. If it isn't my old pal Randolph and Jerry North, the boy publisher. Hello, Walter. And what do you want? I think that you all know my wife, except this young lady. Uh, I'm Pam North. And I'm Ned Walters, a rival publisher of your husband's. You must have heard him talk of me. He hates my inside. Yes, who does not? I call that very unneighborly. I'm sorry to barge in like this, but we just wanted to get the key to the house from the Tuckers. Oh, you must be the people who rented. It's ironic, isn't it? Poor old Randy has his least favorite character installed right next door to him. Excuse me one moment. I'm going to burn that house down. Why don't you wait until we're in it? Uh, Jim, could we have the key to the house? My wife wants to do a few things, sort of do the place over. Over my dead body. Oh, don't you love being a little childish? After all, we are going to be neighbors. We might as well make the best of it. What Mark is trying to say in her faltering manner is, why not bury the hatchet? No, don't tempt me. <laughs> Mrs. Walters is right. It's silly to carry on this feud. Why don't you all make up and then, then we could smoke a pipe of peace or something? Well, I'm perfectly willing. I'll even take a drink on it. Go on, Randy. Okay, I surrender. Well, what about those drinks? May I help you? What's everyone going to have? Scotch on the rocks for me. I seldom take a drink, but since this is such a joyous reunion, make mine bourbon on the rocks. I'm in the publishing business, too, Mr. North. Oh, is that so? What firm? Jim is my editorial assistant. I'm sending him to London to open up a branch. At least, that's what he thinks. Actually, I'm getting him out of the country so that I can live in his house. Why, Phyllis, you get more like your father every day. Phyllis's father was the head of our firm until he got old and weak. You mean until you became too strong? Phyllis, you shouldn't talk to your husband's boss like that. Here you are, dear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a toast to new friendships. To you, Randolph. Oh, that scotch, and I hate the stuff. You have my drink, dear, and you've already drunk most of it. 
Drink and be merry, for tomorrow we die. <laughs> toast. As sheriff, I warn you that none of you may leave the county until after the inquest. But surely there's no reason to keep me here. I'm sorry, Mr. Walters. That goes for everyone. You certainly should want to help clear up your wife's murder. Take my advice. Stop looking for my wife's murderer and start looking for my murderer. Just what do you mean by that? The poison was put in the drink intended for me. The bourbon on the rocks, not the scotch which my wife ordered. Uh, do you suspect anyone who might have a motive to kill you? I suspect everyone in this room, with the exception of yourself and Mrs. North. Well, that's very generous of you. If I'd wanted to kill you, Wallace, I would have done it two years ago, and... Go on, Mr. Summers. What were you going to say? I'll say it for him. He thinks his wife and I were in love. Of course, it's perfectly ridiculous. Ridiculous, but true. Sophia. What's the use of pretending it'll all come out eventually? I was in love with Ned Walters two years ago. I even thought of leaving my husband for him. And then he met another woman, a rich woman, who could help him with his career, the late Mrs. Walters. Are you suggesting I married my wife for her money? Just a moment, please. Uh, what about you, Mr. Tucker? Oh, I didn't try to kill him, although I would have liked to. Well, such popularity must be deserved. Go on, Mr. Tucker. I was working for Phyllis's, my wife's father. My father-in-law intended that I should take his place, but uh, Walters managed to get such a stranglehold in the business that he rose to the top spot after my father-in-law's death. Furthermore, if it hadn't been for your nagging and bullying, my father would probably be alive today. Well, you certainly all seem to have your motives. And you certainly all had the opportunity. Why, there isn't one of you who couldn't have slipped the poison in that drink. Well, I'll be getting on. I have to check the nature of that poison. Where will you all be stopping? Well, Mr. and Mrs. North will be staying here with us. We'll be next door at our house. And you, Mr. Walters? I'll stay in the police station or any other place where my well-wishers can't get at me. Now, stop being melodramatic. If you want, you can stay in our guest room. I'll even give you a key so you can lock yourself in. Well, Mr. Walters? I'll accept the offer, providing the key goes with it. Be seeing you all in the morning. We hope. Just another quiet weekend. Jerry, Jerry! What you want? I, I think I heard a shot. It sounded like it came from the Tucker house. Oh, don't be silly. It's only that confounded owl. Well, I never heard an owl. It sounds like a revolver. Come on. Put on your robe. I... Oh. Here. Oh. Well, don't knock yourself out. What was it, a shot? Yes, someone shot at me. Well, did you see anyone? No. Well, are you sure they shot at you? Oh, what do you call this empty shell? I found it just outside the window. What happened? I thought I heard a shot. You did. Somebody shot at me. Well, there doesn't seem to be anyone there now. You came in after your wife, Tucker. Where were you? I came from my bedroom, of course. Couldn't find my robe. What are you trying to infer? Well, someone shot at me, and I'll find out who it was. Oh, hurry, Jerry. Aren't you dressed yet? How can I hurry when I can hardly move? Oh, Walters must have designed this room. Oh, let's cut out this nonsense and get back to bed. Oh, Jerry, there's someone running across the lawn from the Tuckers. Maybe it's the one who fired the shot. No, it's probably the milkman. Come on, back to bed. Not till I find out what's going on around here. Hey, Pam, I just found out who killed Mrs. Walters. Who? You. Me? Sure, you said you wanted to kill him and you helped prepare the drinks. Walters, what are you doing here at this hour? Where's your husband? Why, he's upstairs asleep, of course. That I'd like to see for myself. You'll do nothing of the kind. I fully realize what you've been through tonight, but other people deserve consideration, too. How long has he been asleep? Well, I don't know exactly. He came to bed shortly after I did. 
Why are you so concerned? Because I think he tried to kill me. Oh, you're insane. He's been asleep for hours. And anyway, he doesn't walk in his sleep. Well, I've written this scene many, many times, but suddenly I can't seem to remember the dialogue. What does this mean? Randy, I... I thought you were upstairs asleep. Yes, now I remember that line. And then the husband says, what is he doing here? Oh, save that dribble for your books. I came here to find out why you took a shot at me just now. That's about as lame an excuse as the other one about somebody trying to poison you. What do you think I'm doing here, Summers? Trying to warm up old Ember? Get out of here. Randy, please. You're going to your room, Sylvia. No, no, there Randy. Are several things. You must I lose will... your temper. Oh, Ned, get out of here before there's any trouble. Not before I find out one thing. Somebody took a shot at me through my bedroom window. Your wife said that you were upstairs asleep, and now you come in fully dressed. I want to know where you were and what you were doing. You probably won't believe me, but I was out taking a walk, thinking about you. I suppose I should feel flattered. No, not particularly. I was thinking I should have killed you two years ago. Brandy, no, you mustn't say things Don't like that. Don't stop him. He means it. You bet I mean it. Oh! Mrs. North, what's happened? I came down for a glass of cookie and milk. Oh, Pam. Pam, are you all right? Oh, gosh, I thought you'd broken your neck. Oh, come now, North. We can't have everything. I bought my head. Let's hope it knocked a little sense into it. And I prescribed the same thing for you. Sheriff, any news? Only about the poison. It was analyzed as curifying. Never heard of it. It's a rather rare compound, used mostly in painting fabrics. Fabrics? Well, that's strange. Uh, what is? Mrs. Walters was a decorator. Her specialty was hand-colored fabrics. But Mrs. Walters is dead. Do you think she used it to kill herself? Or her husband? Well, I, I don't understand. I do. She put the poison in her husband's drink, and the drinks got shifted around. Well, but it was Walters who did the shifting. She must have known her own glass was poisoned. Maybe she was afraid. Afraid to reveal that she'd put the poison in his drink, and so she drank it herself rather than confess to the murder. Oh, she'd have found some excuse, dropped the glass or spilled it, rather than drink the poison and kill herself. Someone's always spoiling my theories. Especially when they're wrong. I'm not so sure I'm wrong. Isn't it possible that having planned Walter's murder and seeing it fail, she preferred to do away with herself rather than go on living with him? I know I would. Well, I'm glad you warned me. Forewarned is forearmed. Well, thank heaven I don't write detective stories. Well, Sheriff, what do you think of this? A shell from a 45. What's this all about? Somebody shot at me through my bedroom window last night. A bad marksman or I wouldn't be here to tell the tale. I told you, you and your owl. Uh, could you tell whether it was a man or a woman? I was asleep, and by the time I got to the window, there was no one in sight. Well, I'll go and have a look. Uh, by the way, Mr. Walters, how did you happen to have your window open? I thought you were afraid of another attempt on your life. I'm also afraid of being suffocated. You know what these farm guest rooms are. Oh, they certainly are. Some of them. I want you all to stay close until I get back. Oh, Sheriff, would you like me to go with you? He would not. Well, Mr. Walters, it looks as if you're running out of suspects. On the contrary, any one of you here might have shot me. And I know at least one of you that has a gun. If I had taken a shot at you, believe me, I wouldn't have missed. Well, that does squelch my theory. And what was that, Mrs. North? Oh, nothing, just a theory. I think you owe it to me to tell me anything that might help solve my wife's murder. Go ahead, Pam. You put your foot in it. Get it out. Well, I... I thought... Well, you see, the sheriff found out that the poison was curifying. Curifying? It's used in painting fabrics, and I thought that maybe your wife was trying to get you and got herself. Very clever, Mrs. North, but the motive is missing. Why should my wife want to kill me? After a year and a half of being married to you, why not? I'm sorry to disillusion you, Randolph, but my wife was sufficiently fond of me to make an offer only a day ago to invest in my business and become a partner. Well, I thought your business was such a success. It didn't need financing. We were going to enlarge the business and make even greater profits. 
And by the way, no, that was a very interesting bit of information about the Curafine. What's so interesting about it? Curafine is not only used for fabric, but also for color printing, for book jackets and illustrations. That would make it available to your husband. And also to Jim. And to you, too. If I was going to do away with it myself, I wouldn't be so elaborate. I prefer privacy. <laughs> he has you there. Oh, stop gloating. He has you, too. How can you play cards at a time like this? I like cards. <laughs> you don't play as though you do. Oh, that's my hand. Oh, sorry. Pamela, keep your mind on the game, please. I wonder why that sheriff doesn't come back. Well, I'll bid one spade. Two hearts. Uh, I'll buy. Anytime you're ready, Pam. Ready for what? Ready for your bid. We are playing bridge. I bid a diamond. Insufficient bid. Why is it? He bid two hearts. Oh. Maybe the sheriff got lost. Uh, could I review the bidding? That does it. I'm tired of playing cards. I'm going to get some fresh air. Here, you take my hand. No, 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 thank you. You mustn't spoil the game. The bid is one diamond. Very well, just one rubber. Pam, don't leave the county. Remember what the sheriff said. I'm just going to exercise the dog. Whose dogs? Mine. <laughs> The one thing that really puzzled me is the slipper. What's so suspicious about a man coming into his room and looking for his slippers? Nothing. But why should he pick them up, drop one, and put the other on the table? There's only one answer to that. He was hiding something in it. Pam, don't you think we'd better get down there and join the others? Oh, Jerry, we mustn't go down until we're sure the others are there. This is going to be a very important experiment, and we mustn't make any mistakes. That's all. What's wrong? 
Oh, I think I hear the clink of glasses. Hey, we'd better get down there before we miss something. Well, come on. Mm, you smell awfully good, Sheriff. You sure you know what to do now? Yes, but I'm not sure I'll let you do it. Well, darling, you've got to. It's the only way. Do the things you can think up to get us into. Well, we've given you up for lost. <laughs> Van Dress is on the installment plan. One garment an hour. I'm sorry we're late. What's the idea? Put all those lights. Can you see anything, Jerry? No. Can you see anything glow? What's the matter, Jim? Take it easy. Everything's all right. May I ask why you did that? I'm sorry. It was reflex action. Huh? Well, it got broken at home, and when it was fixed, it worked the wrong way. You know, up instead of down. Well, now, really. Oh, what have you put, down, the right? put those lights on. Does anyone have the correct time? I was just showing you how our lights work at home. Yes, I think we have the point, Mrs. North. You don't need to press it. What have your lights at home got to do with turning those off here? Well, that's where the reflex action part comes in. You see, when I walk into our living room, I always turn the lights on, and for a moment I thought I was home. <laughs> Which gives you a rough idea of my home life. <laughs> for a moment I thought someone was having another go at me. For a moment it entered my mind. <laughs> oh, can't we stop, forget all this for a moment? I, I mean, forget that there was a murder and act like civilized people. I don't intend to forget that my wife was murdered instead of me. That doesn't tend to make one act like civilized people. But if we keep suspecting each other and brooding about it, anything's apt to happen. Exactly. That's why I hope the sheriff gets back before it does. I have an idea. Let's all search each other for concealed weapons. Mrs. North, you're full of ideas, all of them equally insane. Oh, now, just a minute, Walters. You can't talk to my wife that way. Oh, please, let's stop all this. Well, why don't we all have a drink? It might cheer things up a little. Yeah, it's just about the mix. Nothing for me. Well, surely you don't think we're going to try and poison you again. Oh, you admit you tried it once. That's a lot of rotten, you know it. Jim, tell him now. Tell me what? Just this. I'm quitting your rotten firm as of now. That saves me the trouble of firing you, although it seems a pity. What's a pity? If I'd have been killed, your husband would have stayed with the firm and probably taken my job. An excellent motive, isn't it? I thought we were going to stop all of this and have drinks. Coming up. Mr. Walter? Another idea? A safe one this time. See this decanter? Clearly. Well, if I have a drink from it with you, will you be convinced that it's not poisoned? I told you yesterday I seldom drink. Oh, but you drank yesterday, and after all, this is an occasion, too. Who knows? Any moment we may discover that one of us is the guilty party. Well, no one has to urge me. Well, just to be congenial. See? Nothing up my sleeve or even in my glass except liquor. <coughs> there, now, wasn't that good? Not bad. You see? Scotch is a good drink after all. Bourbon. Oh, no, you just had a drink of scotch. Bourbon, it says so on the decanter. We switched them earlier this evening when no one was downstairs. What is this? Very simple, Randy. Yesterday, just before Mrs. Walters died, Mr. Walters said he couldn't stand scotch. In fact, he shifted drinks with his wife. Well, he just drank a whole glass of scotch and admitted he liked it. What have you got to say to that, Walters? Well, you're a fine bunch of amateur detectives. You'll also recall that I said that I seldom drank. I wouldn't know the difference between bourbon and scotch. You knew the difference yesterday. And by the way, slipper, slipper, who has the slipper? What do you mean by that? Well, I hope you don't mind, but I was under your bed when you were groping for your slipper. You left one on the table in your room. What was in it, Mr. Walters, the poison? Are you implying... Hold this. Jerry, grab him. <laughs> the what? What's going on here? Murderer. And here's the purifier. It was planted on me. I think not. I've done some checking, Waters. You insured your wife's life for $100,000 just last month. That's the money you were after. I might have known it. This is an outrage. I, I demand to see my lawyer. You can get in touch with him from the jail. Uh, by the way, Mrs. North, how did you know? Oh, it was so simple. You see, I was under his bed. What? Don't interrupt. I would not get a breath of fresh air, and while I was under his bed, he reached in for his slippers, and I saw his watch. It glowed, so I knew that whoever had a glowing watch must be after the poison. It had to be the murderer. Why, well, he even shot a bullet into his own wall so that we'd be suspected. Uh, would you mind repeating that? Certainly. You see, I went out to get a breath of fresh air. Oh, no! <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSales. Presentation.